Hello and welcome back. This is Candace from Candoodle and today we're going to be making this fun Ferris wheel interactive card. To make this card, I actually followed a blog post by Davina on the Butterfly Reflections in Ink blog. And I don't know about you, but I'm much better at watching video tutorials than reading, but this blog post was great and really thorough. So I thought I'd take you along with me in this video today as I make this card. So I'm just starting off by putting a blank piece of copy paper into my MISTI and using my magnets to stick that down. This doesn't have to be on any fancy paper because we're actually just going to use this as a template for some of the work that we're going to do later on. So I'm just taking the Ferris wheel stamp and I'm going to stamp that down on the piece of paper. And again, this isn't going to show anywhere. We're just using this as a template so you could do this on any sort of scrap paper. And I'm just using my Gina K Amalgam ink, but you could use any ink and stamping down. And I'm really focusing, I want the ink on that center, the spokes of the Ferris wheel, because that's what we're going to be tracing later on. And I just took the stamp off of my Misty to try and line up because I want this to be a full wheel for the interactive mechanism. Um, and it's obviously only a half stamp. So I'm just trying to line that up to see what the wheel would look like if it were a full wheel. And I'm not being really careful to stamp out the baskets because those aren't going to be involved in this step of what we're creating. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to take that out and I am going to get out my artograph trace table again. I used this in my last video. Like I said, you could totally do this on a window, but I love my trace table. Um, so I'm taping that down because I don't trust myself and this is just my regular 110 pound cardstock that I usually stamp on. And I'm using my Hero Arts nesting circles um, just because I wanted to outline the circle of the Ferris wheel and I am not good at freehand drawing circles. Um, so I'm just using a die to do that for me um, to make kind of a template. And I believe I used the third largest of the Hero Arts nesting dies. And then I'm just coming in with a clear ruler and my Copic multi-liner. I'm using a 0.3, um, but any black pen could work. Um, and I just went ahead and traced all of those. Now I'm going to stamp this again um, because I want the baskets uh, that are going to attach to the wheel. So I wanted three of them, so I just stamped those. And I am using the die cut to make my life a little bit easier, but I am just going to go ahead and fussy cut off the rest of the die because I'm really only interested in the baskets. Um, and you can see where the stamp kind of continues, but I do end up covering that later with some opaque white paint. I use Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, um, but any acrylic paint would work. Um, and that's just to cover up those stamped lines. So here I'm going to show you how I do my stamping when I am producing quite a few. Um, I wanted three unicorns uh, to sit in each of the little ferris wheel baskets. So I'm just lining up my dies on a piece of the 110 pound paper that I usually stamp on. And I am cutting that down just so I have a piece that I can still magnetize to my misty, but it is small enough to fit in my stamping pouch when I go to store this later. So I die cut all of the pieces and I'm just um, inlaying the die cut piece and then lining up my stamp, closing the misty, and then removing that inlay piece. You don't have to line them up with the pieces inlaid. You could just use the template to line up the stamps, but I find it a little bit easier to see if the stamps are actually lined up directly in the center if I do it this way. Um, but again, you could totally just do it with the template um, and the black spaces in the misty. It might be a bit easier if you put white paper underneath, um, but this is just the easiest way that I've found for me personally to line it up. I'm horrible if I stamp first and then die cut, um, so I prefer to do it this way. Now I'm just taking some blank copy paper and I am going to use my ink and I'm going to stamp down the stamps just to see where they are and to make sure I'm really happy with the placement and they're in the middle before I go and stamp on all of my die cuts. So I was happy with where they were and I die cut a few more pieces off screen and then I'm just going to inlay each of these little pieces um, in their little lock and key fit here. It's like a puzzle and then I'm going to stamp each of them. Um, so I usually do like to double stamp things and I find that this is just the easiest way to quickly mass produce things. Um, and I only did three for this card, but I did do more off screen. Um, so I generally make these for any of my stamp sets when I am mass producing because I just find it tends to go a lot faster. 
And for me, I do like to use my craft tweezers. These are the EK Success brand, just to take out the little pieces once I'm done stamping them because I find that sometimes the stamp ink is still a little bit um, wet. So I don't want to smear that at all, um, which I've made the unfortunate mistake of doing a few times. Um, and so now I'm just stamping my last flag and the cotton candy, and then I am done with the stamping. So now we're going to come in with some Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide ink in a life-changing blending brush, and I'm just blending that around my Ferris wheel. And I could have gone a little lighter handed here, um, but I didn't, so hindsight is 2020. Um, and I'm just using, this is some acrylic paint, and it is a silvery color. And I wanted to do that because I wanted the outside of the Ferris wheel to be a little bit silver. Um, this is actually an ink that I use for calligraphy, but I thought it would be perfect for this. And as you can see, I'm just scratching off um, some of the ink from my paintbrush at the side, and that's because it was reactivating the Distress Oxide ink. Um, so just to not cross-contaminate my paint. And so now we're gonna do an ink smooshing background. So I have a five by seven piece of regular cardstock and I just smooshed some of my Distress Oxide in the Peacock Feathers again down on some clear acetate. And then I sprayed that with my spray bottle and I just smooshed it on my background. Um, and so I am going to heat set this between layers. I like to use a clipboard so I don't heat up my whole desk. I find it sets a little bit faster that way. And I just re-wet some of the ink that was there from the last round of doing this with my Distress Sprayer again. And I am just doing that to add a little bit more dimension, um, especially to the areas that still have a lot of white space. Uh, and I'm going to heat set that once again between layers, and then I'm going to clean my desk and the acetate sheet because we're going to repeat this now with the regular Distress Ink, but still in peacock feathers. Um, I put a little bit too much water, so you saw me wipe that off with a baby wipe, um, just so I have more concentrated color. And I just find adding the regular Distress Ink adds a little bit more dimension to the oxide um, because it is a little bit more pigment rich and less chalky. So now we are going to get into the mechanism part of this. So I made a template here with my orange sheet of paper just so you can see where we're headed. So we are going to use hole punches, um, just a regular hole punch, to punch holes in our Ferris wheel. I wanted to make sure I did it right <laughs> instead of messing up my Ferris wheel, so I did it on my template first. And then we are going to have a, another circle at the back, and we're going to put a brad through. This is ex exactly like the reveal wheel mechanism from Lawn Fawn. Um, and then at the back, that is where the foam tape will go on the gray circle, and that's what's going to attach it to the card. And then the unicorns are going to be threaded through those holes, and then that's what's going to be able to make them spin. But you'll see more as we're going to go along here. Um, so I'm just showing that the unicorns will go over those holes, so you don't have to worry for them to be too perfect. Um, but you'll see how I attach those later on as we go through the video. I just thought it was easier to have a... A mechanism ready at the side so I could have something to kind of ground my thinking um, and again I wanted to make sure when I was going to punch those holes it was going to go well. So this would work best with the My Favorite Things um, pieces that are used for interactive mechanisms but I didn't have any of those so I have these little polymer clay pieces from Studio Katia and I'm going to use those to put um, through the hole and glue to the back of the unicorn. So uh, I am going to start by punching those holes just at the kind of cross points of the ferris wheel and I chose my three not prettiest ones um, but I made sure that they were equal distant apart because they are going to be covered up a little bit by the unicorn. And then I just went ahead and used my craft pick to punch through the center so that Brad had somewhere to go. I'm using my template um, which I found the center of by doing two folds and I am now punching that through my good copy version, which is just a piece of 110 pound gray cardstock. It doesn't so much matter about the color of this one because it is going to be hidden behind and you're actually not gonna see it at all in the final card. So I'm closing my brad and then just making sure that spins and it actually wasn't spinning that great because I closed my brad too tightly. So what I did was took my plastic ruler and put it underneath and then closed the brad just so it has a little bit more wiggle room and you can see it spins better now. So I'm just taking the MFT, um, this is from the interactive up and down die set, to just cut those little circles that you can see on the left hand side, because that's what's going to act as a stopper piece at the back to hold the unicorns in place. Um, so you'll see those a little bit later once I do my gluing of these little pieces here. 
So I am taking my Lawn Fawn glue and I am putting those on the little polymer clay um, circle pieces and I am going to glue them to the head slash neck area of my unicorn. And you definitely could have glued them just to the back of the unicorn. I don't know why I put them in place first and then did this. Um, I took the path of most resistance here. It did give me a better idea of placement, um, but you definitely could have just glued them to the back of the neck, um, which I realized for the third one. But nonetheless, I did it this way. And so I am just going to do that to each of the three of them. And you do see I wipe away a little bit of the excess glue with my tweezers just to make sure that because these pieces were almost exactly the size of the hole, I didn't want anything to get in the way of them being able to twist and turn. Um, and so here I am putting one of those stoppers at the back um, from the circles that I've cut out. You can cut out any size circle as long as they're bigger than the whole punch circle. And I realized that the unicorn didn't have enough room to kind of move around the way that I wanted it to. Um, so what I ended up doing was gluing another piece of those polymer pieces at the back. And this just gives it a lot more room to move around. Um, so I did that off camera and then I also die cut three of the baskets um, from the stamp set again because I wanted more weight at the bottom and just to add some more stability. So I am now using my anti-static powder tool and I'm really putting that around my polymer pieces because there's a lot of layers of glue there and I didn't want any sticky residues to mess up how they're moving in the mechanism. So I did that to each of them and then I was carefully just wiped off the top with my finger to make sure there was still somewhere that didn't have anti-static that I could glue down. So at this point I switched over to my glossy accents to make sure I got a nice strong hold and I put those reinforcement circle pieces and I glued one to the back of each of the unicorns. And so after this is done our mechanism is assembled and I did make sure to hold those there for a while um, before turning it around to make sure things moved well. And the unicorns were now moving a lot better than they were with just the one polymer piece there, but they still needed some weight at the bottom. So I went back to the blog post and Davina said that she put washers at the bottom, which I didn't have, but I did have dimes. Um, in Canada, we don't have pennies anymore, so these are the next best things. Um, and I put those at the bottom of each of the pieces just to give it a bit more weight so that the basket would kind of sink to the bottom as you turn the wheel. Um, and I noticed that the dimes were getting a little bit stuck on the edges of the ferris wheel. So what I ended up doing was taking some regular scotch tape and just taping those dimes down. That way it kind of has a more slanted um, increase rather than the ridge right at the edge of the dime. So it just kind of helps to make it flow a little bit smoother. Um, so I did that to each of them and then my pieces were moving a lot better. They're still not completely perfect as you can see my one turned upside down there but for the most part they're pretty good. So I'm just taking some double-sided tape and this is the Be Creative or Suka Wang brand and I'm using that because um, this background I used a lot of water to create it so I wanted it to make sure it laid down nice and flat to my card base. Um, so I am using a stronger tape than I usually do and I just tape that down to my 5x7 card and then I am going to go ahead and assemble the rest. So I started with a sentiment which is a tailored expressions strip um, and I did pop it up on foam tape and then I'm popping up the mechanism on foam tape but you're going to see that I do change course in a second here. Um, because when I taped this down with the foam tape, uh, the ferris wheel mechanism, and went to move it, I did realize that it was getting caught on the sentiment strip. So I didn't panic, and I said, okay, I am just going to really quickly tear this up. I did this carefully to try and not mess up the background at all, um, and I took another sentiment strip from the same package, and I glued it down flat just with some liquid adhesive, and then the flowed much better, and they didn't get caught on anything. Um, so I was much more happy with that and I was looking at it and I still felt that it was missing a little something. So I did go back and stamp and die cut some of those stars um, just from the stamp set and glue, die cut and glued those down um, because I didn't want any thick embellishments to get in the way of the mechanism. And then I'm just adding some Wink of Stella on top. Um, to add some shine and that is the final card. Um, I'm really happy with how this turned out and I'm so happy I found this post by Davina um, which I will link to below in the description box. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so happy that you stopped by. Please leave me a comment telling me what you'd like to see in future videos. I am so thankful for the time that you spend here with me. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Candoodle Creations, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!